We're going to be installing the uh, wireless RF transparent Leviton uh, media enclosure in this stud bay uh, in preparation for uh, drywall and paint. Uh, so we're in the rough-in stage of this construction site right now. And uh, we're going to start by bringing in our power, our AC cabling, and we're going to bring in our low voltage cabling, which is already pulled and waiting to be installed. So we'll start first by drilling the holes to bring in the uh, um, electrical power and I'll drill the holes above to bring in the low voltage cabling. You want to try to bring the low voltage cabling in to the same stud bay where you're going to install the enclosure. We'll start by drilling this hole here. We're going to check to make sure there's nothing above so we don't drill into some pipe or something. That'll bring in this cable and we will bring in our, low, our power cable from below. Now we'll bring in our power cable, enough to reach up to the enclosure. Just keep it out of the way for now, we're not gonna staple it yet. Then from up above, bring in our low voltage cabling. Now one thing to note is um, whenever you're drilling holes like this in these two by four studs, uh, the drill that I use is an inch, uh, inch and a quarter, so it's a pretty big hole. That means that the hole is within an inch or so of the edge of the stud. So we need to put a nail plate to protect those, uh, those holes from drywall screws penetrating later. Don't uh, forget to put these in. So we'll set one in back here as well. And this one. They don't require any screws or anything. They have a little bent up tab, so you can just nail them in. And this will keep the uh, drywall screws from penetrating and hitting this cable. All right, we'll get this out of the way and we'll install our enclosure. It doesn't really matter what size enclosure you're gonna put in. Assuming that this isn't a closet where something is going to be installed here that you know in advance, assuming this is just a bare wall um, when the house is finished, we're gonna to try to put the enclosure, so the center of the enclosure is at 48 inches from the finished floor. And that's a typical uh, uh, outlet height for, or switch height. So it's a comfortable place for most people to work and it doesn't end up being so low as it's inconvenient for people to work on the enclosure later. So here's four feet, we'll strike a mark here. That will be the center of our enclosure. All right, this is the 28 inch version of the uh, wireless RF transparent enclosure. Uh, the first thing we need to do is save this part. This is uh, installed in the enclosure uh, for as a mud guard and we're gonna need this later. For right now, I'm just gonna pull it out and set it aside, but don't throw it away. It is not packaging. It is something that we're going to need later. Now you'll note on this product, it sits right in the stud bay. These are 16 inches on center. From the center of this stud to the center of this stud is 16 inches. This space is about 14 and a half inches, and that's what it's designed to fit into. So the there are, um, center points you can locate on all the enclosures depending on which model. In this case, the hinges are the center, not the tab, but the hinge itself. So we can put that hinge right on our mark. Okay? The, uh, the easiest way to install this is you'll note that there are these keyholes here. There's a keyhole tab here and here. These keyholes are where you can put in a screw and then just drop it on. It makes the installation much simpler. So I'll go ahead and mark this one take it away and I'll put a screw in that spot. So I'll take one of these screws and I'm just using a standard drywall screw. Uh, there's not, uh, there's a lot of options there, a wood screw, but a drywall screw is just fine. We'll put it in the top of that keyhole area. And leave, it, leave it loose, at least a quarter inch. Then you can take your enclosure, put it over the screw and it'll drop into place. So that'll hold it in place. It's gonna flop around a little bit, but this will keep it in place for you to set the other screws so you're not trying to hold it 
and drive screws, which could cause you to poke your finger or something. There's no uh, set procedure for putting these in. You wanna make sure that, they're, that it sits level. And as long as it's laying up against one of these studs and the studs are level, that will be plenty. Now I'll go ahead and install these screws. I'm gonna install the rest of the screws through the slots because it tends to keep the box from moving around very much. So the keyhole you'd only really use to hang the first screw and I just use the slots after that. Don't drive these in tight just yet. We're just gonna put them in to keep the box in place. Okay. That looks good. We'll tighten this first one that we use the keyhole and then we'll tighten these in. You can actually drive these in until they're about flush with the plastic. The plastic is, is soft. These tools have a lot of power. You can drive them all the way through, okay? If that happens, like let's, let's see this happens here. If we drove it all the way through and now it's not gonna hold anymore, you have another slot. Just drive another screw and be careful. So we're gonna bring in cable from the top. You can uh, take these knockouts out a number of ways. You can use a screwdriver and pry them out, or you can take a hammer and knock them out, which is my preference. Okay. And you can bring your cables in directly like so. For a cleaner and neater look, there's an optional item, this rubber grommet right here. All right, these rubber grommets here fit into the hole, the two inch hole I just knocked out. Okay. They fit right in here. In order to get the cables through, you cut the hole to size for the bundle. Okay, so this has long slots, the ones that are, that are showing horizontal and vertical here, and it has short slots that are diagonal. If you were to cut, take your knife and cut through on the short side, you'd, have, you'd end up with a small opening. Whereas if you cut through these longer ones, you'd have a bigger opening, obviously. Uh, the main thing to note is, it, is we've put these little stops in here so that if you use the small opening, it won't continue and tear open to a bigger opening. So you can control the size of the opening you're gonna use with this grommet. Got my blade exposed. Carefully cut through the, the slots. All right, we're gonna cut through here. It's a safe place to hold it is up against the stud and cut right on through it. And cut this other one. That will create a nice big opening for you to pass your cables through. All right, now we're going to install this. You've already cut the opening. We're going to install it. There's a, uh, these are, they're a little stiff to install, but if you, uh, you work your way around the edges, it's a very snug and tight fit. Now you use this kind of product in order to keep things from falling into the enclosure from above. Um, wood chips, dust, things like that. It's a nice tidy way to do it, but it also protects the edge, um, protects the cables from the edges of the enclosure. Even though this is a plastic enclosure, they still have a, an edge to them. All right, we have, uh, now that we've got our low voltage cables secured and out of the way, we're gonna be bringing in our AC power cable. Uh, we're gonna use this opening here. There are two knockouts, and there's also one big knockout that can be used for various power supplies. We're gonna be using the 47605 ACS, and that is a single outlet. So we're just gonna knock out this center one, and we're gonna bring the cable up here and leave it for installation at trim out phase. So I'm gonna knock this guy out carefully. Now, we need to secure that cable to the wall stud within six inches of where it comes through the stud and within six inches of the enclosure. So this is only about a foot. We'll just need two of these, two of these staples to do this job. One here and one here. You wanna leave six inches to a foot of cable sticking out. Uh, you'll be able to cut this off later. Okay, so now that we have our, our cable here prepared, it's not gonna fall back in because we've secured it from below. Um, we'll set that in here. We'll bring this cable in here, make sure it's not hanging out, we'll coil it up inside. And we're going to put the cardboard cover in. 
that we secured earlier. This one. And you'll see it has some flaps on the side here. We need to fold these flaps up, make them square it up again, top and bottom. These fold in and the, the assembly pops into this cavity. Okay, and then we're gonna secure it with some tape and hold in place. And that will be the rough-in phase complete.